But you guys got another PC build video here for you. This one was for a fellow YouTuber. He said his budget was going to be a thousand pounds, but it ended up to be one thousand one hundred and seventy five pounds with all the parts that I purchased on Amazon. Now, this is the Fantex uh, Pro M case. And the reason why I went with this one is because he wanted a DVD ROM drive in here. So I went with this case because it does have a, a slot on the front. Also it has RGB and I do like that white interior. It does look quite nice. Also we got the Ryzen 7 2700X. Also went with the Samsung 970 Evo Plus 512GB uh, drive here. Also got the Corsair Vengeance 32GB of uh, LPX memory which is ideal for what he wants because he wants to uh, edit videos. Also went with the EVGA Supernova 650W uh, G3 series uh, power supply here, two terabyte drive, and the MSI B450 Tomahawk motherboard. He's not going to be overclocking or anything like that. He just wants something uh, that's uh, going to be able to edit his videos, and it's a massive upgrade compared to what he wants. We have got the graphics card coming, which is a 1660 um, card here, which I'll show you a little bit later on in the video. It didn't uh, come in time for me to show it on the uh, parts list here but basically all the parts will be listed in the video description for you all in all I think this is going to be ideal for what he needs uh, his budget was a thousand pounds again it crept up a little bit um, but there we go that's how it works sometimes but we've got the uh, motherboard here what we're going to do is get the motherboard out and prep the motherboard get everything installed onto the motherboard uh, so we can then drop that into the case uh, so this motherboard is a B450 Tomahawk uh, by MSI I'm a big fan of MSI products. I do like the MSI uh, motherboards. You've got all your usual suspects inside here, your installation guide, your uh, user manual, which you want to keep safe, a CD, and some cables, and your IO shield in here, and a tiny little screw for the um, M.2 slot there, which you can screw the uh, NVMe drive down, which we will do later on. Now this is not a super high-end motherboard, uh, but it is quite a nice little motherboard for the build that we got here. Um, we've got some uh, heat sinks on the top here for your VRMs and stuff like that, and your chokes on the top, so that's nice to keep them cool. Got four slots for your memory, and also you've got your 24 pin here and a bunch of other features on here. Now the good thing about this board is it's gonna be ideal for what he needs. He's not gonna be doing some overclocking on here, even though he could do some uh, moderate overclocking he's not going to be doing any of that stuff he doesn't want a game or anything like that uh, but we're just going to be using this as a, a real sort of a, a budget sort of build really so let's go ahead and get the cooler out we're going to be using the cooler here which comes with the Rafe uh, Spire cooler inside the 2700X this is the processor right here we're going to be using for the build I'm a big fan of Ryzen I think they're a really nice affordable processor and they give you a really good bang for the buck and uh, plenty powerful for what he's going to need on a daily basis so as you can see here this is the actual uh, CPU here and uh, it's got the little triangle in the corner like all the other uh, CPUs before it on Intel and Ryzen and this just has to marry up on the motherboard here to make sure you've got it in the right orientation just pull the retention lever up and just basically slot that bad boy in there there we go I like to give it a little jiggle just to make sure that it's in the slot properly and then pull the retention lever down and that is that done. It's never been more easier today to build a PC. So here it comes the cooler. Now the cooler does come with compound pre-installed on there. We've got the uh, copper pipes here. We've got two on each side, which is good enough for what he's going to need. I did offer him a water cord solution, but he preferred to have the uh, air cooler. And it's got a nice thick copper plate there, as you can see, which is going to dissipate the heat lovely. And this cooler works pretty well. Now, of course, you can change the compound if you wish to a better compound if you wish, but I'm going to leave it as a stock compound. Now, it does have a little bracket on here, which I need to hook up to. So I'm just going to line it up first. And once I get it lined up, try not to let the compound sit down. There we go. And you can see there's a little metal latch here that I need to put around to the plastic catch on the board which is your bracket system so I just need to push this round and once I get this pushed over I'll be able to put the 
lever over and this will basically push down uh, the cooler onto the CPU to keep it nice and tight. There we go. Now I've just run the cable to the CPU header onto the board. There's also one for the pump as well if you're using a water cooler. Use the CPU header. Now we're going to be using the Corsair DDR4 3200 MHz, 32 gigabytes of RAM here. Now this Vengeance LPX is 3200, uh, which is ideal for Ryzen. And also I like it because it's low profile and it doesn't impede on any sort of issues that you may be running into with uh, CPU coolers if you're using the larger coolers. Now just make sure you check with your user manual if you're not sure which slot these go into. There's a little notch on here and you just have to line them up with the ones on the board. In this case it will be A and B. Now it wasn't marked on the board but if you're not sure just check with your motherboard manual and you should be able to find out uh, which one's what. So I'm just going to put it in this slot, push it down a little bit firmly, you should hear a little click and make sure the latches are pulled up. And then just put the second one in uh, which one you want to do. Now sometimes you may run into problems with bigger heat sinks and stuff and you may need to put this in first. Uh, it just depends on uh, what sort of uh, cooler you're using for your build. Now also you can always check your user manual which gives you all the information about which slots to populate for your memory to get the best performance out of it and you can see here it's all listed in the user manual. So if you're not familiar with uh, building a computer the manual tells you pretty much everything you need to know on how to build a PC. So the Samsung uh, 970 Evo Plus NVMe M.2 500 gigabytes. This is for our Windows installation. We're going to be using that in this build. And at the moment, the price on the Samsung uh, NVMe uh, drives are pretty cheap. And it generates speeds of 3,500 reads to 3,500 writes, which is pretty awesome. Now, don't get the SSDs mixed up with the NVMe drives. NVMe is way faster than the standard SSD, and you get those uh, types of SSDs for the M.2 as well. So you can see there's a little screw located on the board and there's also a little screw that comes in the motherboard box which we are going to screw down our M.2 drive to the board. So all we need to do now is slot in our little M.2 drive into the board and use our locking screw to lock down the drive. And these obviously free up a lot of space and cut down on cables and stuff like that so they are a really nice little feature to keep a nice clean tidy build if you're after just something that's nice and simplistic this is a really good approach to uh, cutting back on cabling and stuff you won't have to use the SATA cables or anything like that or a power cable it just saves a lot of space so let's go ahead and uh, put the locking screw down and you can just use a, a little small screwdriver here to lock this down try and get yourself a little magnetic screwdriver because these screws are super tiny and uh, you can either hold it on with your finger like this if you don't have a magnetic screwdriver pretty straightforward and easy to do and then just lock that screw in try not to cross thread it and uh, if you've got sausage fingers like me then it makes it a little bit more difficult but it's pretty straightforward and easy to do there we go that's now located in and this is just a standard little small Phillips screwdriver there so okay, so we've got all this done. Let's move on to the next step here. I'm just going to pull this plastic off this uh, motherboard uh, cover here. So I'm just going to pull these off. And you can see we are pretty much ready to go now. There's a couple of little areas on the back of this or the side of it of this uh, heatsink here, which has got some plastic covers on here. And these are for the cables that come with the heatsink cooler. And this is for the RGB because it does have RGB on here and it should be listed on the board as well there's two of them here and you can get the information from your user manual it will tell you where they're located now obviously I don't want to use the one all the way down the other side of the motherboard so I'm going to be using the one up the top here near the uh, CPU uh, header on the board there so I'm just going to be using this one here now there is another one next to it which goes to your USB as well you can either use one of these uh, to power it up so I'm just going to use this one here so just slot this in there we go 
Now I definitely don't want to be using the other cable because that's on the other end of the board here. So I'm just going to put this little rubber grommet back into the connector here. I wasn't sure which one went into which port so I just pulled them both off. But just uh, check out which one you want to use. I prefer to use the uh, other power cable but this one goes all the way down to the other side of the board there. Now we're getting power to this by the CPU header on the board. So we don't need to run power, more power than we need. So let's remove the side panels from the case itself. These are just held in with screws here. So I'm going to remove both panels here, the glass panel and the metal panel on the other side. So we can get full access here. And there we go. And this is a full size piece of glass for the side of the case, which I like quite a lot. And I do like that um, sprayed white inside. It does look quite nice. So try to get yourself some black and white parts so that looks good. Now you can see here there's a bit of a machine finish for the plastic on here. So I'm just going to try and pull these plastic bits off of the logos here. They generally put these all over the power supply, the uh, memory and also over the case and everything else. It's all over the logos and stuff like that. So you can pull this off if you want to. It's quite fiddly or you can leave it on there. It's entirely up to you. I prefer to remove it. Now, of course, we had a budget here of £1,000 to buy uh, computer components, and it sort of went over a little bit, and that's because it was probably more beneficial to spend that little bit more to get a better PC than it would have been to uh, stick to that £1,000 mark. So just a little bit over, uh, but other than that, it's a pretty decent bit of kit. Also, there was requirements that I had to stick to, which was the DVD-ROM drive had to be on the case, so I had to try and find a case which uh, supported that. And I didn't want to go too cheap with the case because I think it's always nice to have a nice case. So we've got the IO shield here and I'm going to drop that into the case now. This is just basically presses in and clips in. It's very simple. And once we've got that inside there, we can then offer up the motherboard. Now the standoffs for the motherboard are already pre-installed on the case. So I've just got to check, make sure the standoffs are in the right locations and then we can offer up the motherboard. Now you can see here we've got a couple of cables here for the USB 3.1 and also for the audio. And uh, I can just route those a little bit later on. So I'm just going to push them back down so I can get the board in. Okay, so let's get the board into the case here. You can see the standoffs here. And they are black standoffs, not that you're going to see them they are all color coded with the case got the io shield in we've got room for uh, grommets here for the cables to go through there's some more grommets here and they're good quality grommets too got some areas here for expansion also area up the top for a large radiator if you wanted to do a closed uh, loop wall cord system or maybe hardline wall cord system it's entirely up to you what you're going ahead and doing with your build so let's offer up the uh, motherboard now to the case there we go and I'm just going to hold on to it from the uh, heat sink here and just drop that into location and then we can screw the motherboard down now you will get an accessory pack inside the case it comes with all the cases be a little box with all your screws and stuff which I'll show you in a second just trying to pull these cables out of the way here at the bottom and uh, there we go there's the accessory box which comes with every sort of case and it will have all your screws and attachments and fittings inside here and these have all been blacked out as well which is a nice touch and uh, we'll go ahead and screw this down make sure you use the right screws and I'm going to be using just a standard Phillips screwdriver here and yes it's just a handheld screwdriver now you may be asking yourself why don't I use an electric screwdriver and uh, to be honest with you, the screws are so small that I just don't see the need for it. I see a lot of people using electrical screwdrivers nowadays on PC builds. And uh, personally, I'm, I just prefer the old fashioned method of using a handheld screwdriver. And I get much more feel for the screw. I don't over screw them and uh, start stripping or shredding screws. Yes, a lot of those modern day screwdrivers do have uh, clutches on them. But the thing is, if it isn't set right, it will strip and shred that screw and it can cause more damage and to be honest there's not much need for it in my sort of life because I don't build PCs like this every single day of the week I wish I could but I don't 
and maybe if I was building you know three or four or five of these a day then I might consider uh, investing in one but up until now it's a handheld screwdriver for me so let's take a look here at the uh, power supply we've got the EVGA Supernova 650G3 gold certified power supply here now this is plenty of power I'll see people going 1000 watts and 1200 watts you don't need that amount of power to power modern day computers today the TDPs are so low on a lot of the hardware nowadays you can get away with uh, a lot less now I tend to aim for a little bit of headroom with the power supply just in case they want to upgrade at a later date and this is a very efficient power supply with a gold certification and I see people cheaping out on power supplies always buy yourself a decent power supply it'll last you for years and this is a fully modular power supply here with plenty of amps on the 12 volt rail which will give us plenty of power and good clean power as well and it's good enough for what we need here so we'll get this installed into the system now I do prefer to use the fully modular power supplies and the reason why is because it cuts down on cable uh, cable mess and cable management it makes it a lot easier to maintain and it's very easy to just add cables when you need them so I'm just going to plug in the cables that I need for this build and there'll probably be some left over so all I need to do here now is put in the power supply and the power supply is put in from this side here as you can see now some of them are different some of them you have to tuck the cables through the back part uh, in this case we've just come in on this side here and pushing it through once you get the cables in and you've got your power supply in you just need to tighten it down it's four screws basically nothing too difficult and uh, just tighten those down it comes with screws in the kit and also with the power supply as well so you just choose which ones you want to use I'm going to be using the black ones so if you've never built a PC before then give it a go it's pretty straightforward and this is a pretty standard uh, simple build there's nothing complicated about it we've got four screw holes here on the back just make sure you're screwing into the threaded holes on the back of the power supply sometimes they're in sort of weird locations on the back they're not dead square and uh, there is an area where you could screw into there which will be into the honeycomb part of the power supply which doesn't have any thread on it also don't over tighten these because this is a common thing that I've seen over the years where you go to uh, tighten them down and they just keep spinning and that's because someone's over tightened them so just be very careful not to over tighten any of these types of screws because they're so small and they will just keep spinning if you do that so let's just get this uh, power supply tightened down simple process really and if you need hand with picking parts and stuff like that then don't forget you can always join the discord server there's people on there that will help you out picking parts and give you an idea of what you should be buying for what sort of budget so we've got some cables here now I'm just going to push some cables through the top here and this is for the CPU for the motherboard so I'm just going to poke this through the hole here and there's a little rubber grommet I might go through that location instead there we go you can poke it through whatever location you want up there whatever looks better for yourself I'll just leave that there for now and I'll poke the 24 pin through as well so I've poked the 24 pin and the CPU one through and all I need to do now is plug those into the board pretty simple stuff there we go now sometimes these can be pretty rigid these cables just putting in the CPU cable here into the board and I'm also going to plug in the USB 3.1 and also audio cable at the bottom now you can use uh, your own uh, cables here to change these up you can use the black and white cables to make it really pop and look really nice and they're pretty affordable nowadays uh, but if you want to use the standard cables like I've used here that's fine because we was on a tight budget so I've just used the standard cables that come with the power supply but if you want to use the uh, more colorful ones you can do but they do cost an extra bit of money and if you're on a tight budget that can be pretty difficult to do so let's go ahead and remove the front panel 
for the CD-ROM drive. Now this is quite a rare thing nowadays. A lot of people don't use the CD-ROMs anymore, but some people still insist that they want to use them, so you have to put them in. If people want it, then you have to give them what they need. So we're going to go ahead and uh, put this in. And there we go, that's in there. Now this is not a Blu-ray one, this is just a standard DVD-ROM drive. And we're just going to tighten these down with a few screws here. There we go. Pretty simple stuff. And all I need to do now is run a cable up from the power supply to that and give it a bit of power and run the SATA cable down to the board. I'll probably pop it back out the back and then come down the bottom and plug it in. And that's pretty simple. So this is just held in by two screws. There's no screws that go on the other side. So it's just two screws on this side. And there we go. So again, don't over tighten these because they will start to spin and that will be that. That's nice and flush, and that's good enough for me. It seems funny seeing a DVD-ROM drive in a case nowadays, but it doesn't look too bad in this case, I must admit. It does look quite nice. So let's go ahead and uh, get the hard drive in here. I'll put the cables in for the DVD-ROM drive in a second. So it's just a 2 terabyte drive for a bit of storage. And it's got a couple of little caddies down the bottom there where we can... Uh, put in our drive. Now this is quite a common thing with uh, modern day cases that they seem to be putting them around the back here and hidden out of eyes view which I do prefer because it just means you don't see those unsightly cages inside the case. It gives, But sometimes it does make the case look a bit bare so it depends on what you're after really. So I'm just going to clip these in. It's a toolless design here. Just as you can see once you've got it mounted in you just pull the little levers round and clip them into place and that's locked into position and I can now just slot this back in and we can give this a bit of power and add the SATA cable to that uh, drive there and there's room for another one in there as well if you wanted to and they can be larger drives if that is what you need so let's go ahead and uh, get some cables here I'm going to try and tidy these uh, cables up a little bit later on so all I need to do now is get the power lead from the power supply and plug this into the hard drive and then drop in the SATA cable there and run that to the board. Pretty simple stuff and we've also got to do that DVD-ROM drive as well. So I'll probably use a separate cable for both of these uh, because they're so far apart. So I'm going to run up another cable here to the DVD-ROM drive. I've already poked through the SATA cable you can see there at the bottom I haven't plugged it in yet. I'm just going to quickly do that. That is for the board. That is for the uh, hard drive to the board. And I've also got one for the DVD-ROM drive which I'm plugging in now. You can see that cable loose down the bottom there. That is for the hard drive. So let me go ahead and just uh, poke this back out here because I don't want that looking uh, unsightly. Try and keep it as clean as possible. So I'm going to go back out and then come through the bottom so it's just not dangling down through inside the case. And there we go. I can tidy these up a little bit later on. And uh, there we go. That's just plugged in there. Now there is also another couple of SATA ports down on the bottom there but I don't like putting them in there because it's just a bit cramped so we'll just go with them right where they are there and I'll tidy these up a little bit later on and that big 24 pin cable you can see the other cable poking through here that's normally not there but because we've got the DVD ROM drive there's just a big cable coming through the top and there's not a lot I can do with that so we'll just have to leave that as is okay so there's a uh, do a bit of cable management here, tidy these cables up a bit. I've already started to tie them into the back little channel here. There's a little channel here that you can use these cable ties that come with the case. So I'm just going to try to keep this all nice and tight here. So I've already done a little bit of cable management here. And I will use some cable ties as well to tidy up some of the other cables. But no one will see any of this cabling round here. It's just a, a just for my own personal preference but again no one will see it it's going to be hidden behind a solid steel uh, piece of sheet here you're not going to be able to see that 
So some people make a big deal out of it, but to be honest with you, it's it's out of eyes view, so it's no big deal. But I'm just going to try and keep it as tidy as I can, and um, make it look a bit nicer. Now again, uh, sometimes you get a bit of bulkiness around here. That's quite uh, common, depending on how many cables you've got here, and it can be a bit tricky to shut the uh, side panel once you've got all the cables pushed in. So try and keep these nice and flat as possible. But that will do me. I'm just going to cut these off here. And uh, no one's going to see that, but that's as good as it's going to get from me today. Now once we've done this, we can uh, put the side panel back on. And we can also put in our graphics card. We're coming to the end of the build. Uh, so let's get the graphics card. And I chose to go with the MSI Armour and uh, this is a uh, GeForce GTX 1660 it's not the TI version it's just the standard 1660 he's not a gamer uh, but it will do for what he needs and I do like it because it's got the white accents on there and I'll try to keep it all in sync here and keep it um, uh, white and black as best as I could and uh, that's what I went with uh, for this build so I'm just going to remove a couple of these little expansion slot here there's two of them I need to remove because it's a thickness of two so I'll just remove a couple of these on the side and as I said it's a really sort of easy build to do there's nothing too complicated about it it's just a nice clean look and there's plenty of speed there for what he needs plenty of processing power and if he wants to play the odd game which he doesn't but if he does then it's good enough to do the odd game as well with that 1660 a 6 gigabyte card and uh, we're just going to slot this in here there we go that's put into place and I've already got the uh, power cable coming up from the bottom there which is going to go into the card itself so I'm just going to give that a little bit of power here there we go and again, if these were black and white cables, that would look really nice with this case. But of course, it all comes down to budget, and what your budget is at the end of the day. And of course, that wasn't in our budget for this build. And that's pretty much it. That's basically the build all done. Just I've screwed down the graphics card so it looks nice and tight. Anyway, that's pretty much the build. It's uh, turned out pretty well, as you can see here, just doing a final few tweaks. Installed Windows 10 Pro. Just going to remove that little side uh, cover here so you can see and the outer ring you can see it's changing colors goes through the color cycle but the main core part of the CPU corner is blue and the RGB on the front of the fans is blue as well and there's a little blue RGB on the back of the board there which lights out blue as well there's a big cable up the top there which I wasn't impressed with uh, which is from the DVD ROM drive but there's not a lot I could do about that I can't hide it any more than I could there so there's not a lot I could do with that but normally that cable wouldn't be there but it's a, a clean as you can get it really to be honest and uh, it looks okay I think it's a, a very minimalistic uh, sort of build I'll leave all the links in the video description if you're interested in the parts that I use for this build and uh, again for £1175 I don't think it's too bad and it's got plenty of power for what he needs to do which is rendering videos and stuff like that he's not a gamer but if he did want to play the odd game he's got that 1660 uh, graphics card in there which will be ample for gaming and playing games anyway I hope you enjoyed the build uh, it turned out okay for me it's uh, not too bad and I should be wrapping this one up and I'll be making more videos in the up and coming weeks hopefully we can get another build done soon for myself which I will share with you guys anyway thanks again for watching my name is Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk bye for now now if you haven't subscribed yet hit the big red subscribe button on my YouTube channel and hit the bell notification button next to that to be notified when we upload new videos.